whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. But this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brothers righteous. The kingdom of darkness through the synagogue of Satan has a way of making their fairy tales become a reality. The reason they can do this, they silence the voice of the opposition and increase their voices to make it seem as if their wisdom supersedes everyone, including the Most High. With many voices being silenced through censorship, the workers of iniquity belittling the people who present truth in their media, dismissing the opposition with labels such as conspiracy theories, the synagogue of Satan make it appear as if no one can challenge their claims. Just because your voice appears to be louder, it doesn't mean what you consider to be world history and truth is not misinformation. The kingdom of darkness via the synagogue of Satan should not have the final say in the people's beliefs and history. I believe the indigenous black people's culture and heritage speaks for itself. The indigenous black people do not need the other species of mankind to speak for them. The indigenous black people can reveal their accomplishments and their heritage on their own accord. And they answered Jesus and said, we cannot tell. And he said unto them, neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. The synagogue of Satan require proof from the indigenous black scholars, historians and prophets of their wisdom. However, they can put out false information in the media, movies, and social media. Nobody can challenge and demand evidence of their findings. Everyone should accept their wisdom as factual. The indigenous black people have been around from the beginning. They've preserved enough culture, heritage, and wisdom to tell their story. Only a people who have something to hide want to disrupt and falsify the identity of the original people made in the image and likeness of the Most High. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. The synagogue of Satan concealed the identity of the serpent seed in many ways. The workers of iniquity use evolution to make it known that there are more than one species of mankind. Evolution is a theory the synagogue of Satan created to cover up the children of the fallen's identity. The synagogue of Satan don't want the indigenous black people to link the other species of mankind to the Nephilim giants in the scriptures. The seed of the fallen are the only other species of mankind the scriptures identify. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. The scriptures do not talk about any other species of mankind outside of the seed of the fallen and the humans that were made in the image of the Most High. Evolution declared there are more than two species of mankind. I have read there are more than nine species according to their sources. However, the workers of iniquity are not consistent with the various species of mankind. Every so often, the workers of iniquity would find a strange skull or the remains of an ancient person in the middle of nowhere and declare the remains to be a new species of humans. Soon after, they proclaim their new founding is a distant cousin of the Homo sapiens. The scriptures do not confirm nor speak about any other species of mankind the workers of iniquity in the beast system discovered over the years. Evolution is propaganda by the synagogue of Satan to hide the identity of the serpent seed. One way the synagogue of Satan hide the origin and identity of the serpent seed using evolution by calling the other species of mankind relatives of the human species. 
the origin of the various species of mankind the workers of iniquity claim they discovered are a mystery according to evolution. The scriptures give a detailed account of the origin of the indigenous black people. Evolution does not give an account of the beginning of the strange species of mankind that came after the indigenous black people. Until this day, the origins of the other species of mankind that dwell among us today is unknown. The only information the synagogue of Satan reveal about the other species of mankind, they live in caves prior to evolving. The scriptures often associate the cave dwellers with the descendants of the Nephilim giants. The Moabites, the Edomites, and the Israelites had giants dwelling on their land many years prior to inheriting their land. The Orims also dwelt in Seir before time, but the children of Esau succeeded them when they had destroyed them from before them and dwelt in their stead, as Israel did unto the land of his possession, which the Lord gave unto them. That also was accounted a land of giants. Giants dwelt therein in old time, and the Ammonites called them Zamzumims, a people great and many and tall as the Anakims. But the Lord destroyed them before them, and they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead, as he did to the children of Esau, which dwelt in Seir, when he destroyed the Orims from before them, and they succeeded them, and dwelt in their stead, even unto this day. The scriptures identify the Nephilim giants and their descendants as the only other species of mankind. The seed of the fallen has dwelt among the indigenous black people for many years, Despite the scriptures saying the Most High destroyed his creation with a flood, the Most High preserved Noah and his family to repopulate the earth. Shem, Ham, Japheth, and their children still encounter the serpent seed despite being the only family to repopulate the earth after the flood. And in the third week of this jubilee, the unclean demons began to lead astray the children of the sons of Noah and to make to error and destroy them. And the sons of Noah came to Noah their father, and they told him concerning the demons which were leading astray and blinding and slaying his sons' sons. And he prayed before the Lord his God and said, God of the spirits of all flesh, who has shown mercy unto me, and has saved me and my sons from the waters of the flood, and has not caused me to perish as thou didst the sons of perdition. For thy grace has been great towards me, and great has been thy mercy to my soul. Let thy grace be lifted up upon my sons, and let not wicked spirits rule over them, lest they should destroy them from the earth. But do thou bless me and my sons, that we may increase and multiply and replenish the earth. And thou knowest how thy watchers, the fathers of these spirits, acted in my day. And as for these spirits which are living, Imprison them and hold them fast in a place of condemnation, and let them not bring destruction on the sons of thy servant, my God, for these are malignant and created in order to destroy. During his prayer, Noah referred to the seed of the fallen as demons and wicked spirits. King David encountered giants during his time. King David fought against many giants. The most famous one was Goliath. The scriptures reveal Goliath had siblings as well as children. Their dwelling was in Gath. King David's generation was several generations after the flood, yet there were giants, the seed of the fallen, dwelling among his generation. And it came to pass after this that there arose war at Gezer with the Philistines, at which time Sibachai the Hushathite slew Sippai, that was of the children of the giant. And they were subdued. And there was war again with the Philistines. And Elhanan, the son of Jair, slew Lamai, the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, whose spear staff was like a weaver's beam. And yet again there was war at Gath, where was a man of great stature, whose fingers and toes were four and twenty, six on each hand, and six on each foot. And he also was the son of the giant. But when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimei, David's brother, slew him. These were born unto the giant in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Despite the scriptures revealing the Most High destroyed the Nephilim giants, 
The seed of the fallen continued to appear throughout the scriptures in multiple generations. Somehow in this generation, the seed of the fallen vanished and no longer dwell among us. The scriptures reveal to us in the book of Enoch that the dwelling of the serpent seed would be on the earth since they came from spirit and flesh. And now the giants who are produced from the spirits and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth and on the earth shall be their dwelling. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle and work destruction on earth and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst and cause offenses. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women, because they have proceeded from them. The seed of the fallen dwell among the indigenous black people throughout their generations. They never stop dwelling among us. The synagogue of Satan want you to believe the seed of the fallen doesn't exist. They love when you misidentify the serpent seed. With the indigenous black people not knowing who their enemies are, they can continue to live among the indigenous black people undetected. There are multiple scriptures talking about the seed of the fallen living among the indigenous black people. Some of our ancestors used the seed of the fallen in their armies. The scriptures revealed they were men of renown and mighty. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. Remember, Goliath was the Philistines' champion. The Philistines rely on him as their lead warrior in their army. When the Israelites sent spies to scope the promised land, they saw the children of Anak. The children of Anak are descendants of the giants. The Israelites knew who they were and what bloodline they descend from. How is it today the presence of the serpent seed is obsolete according to the synagogue of Satan? In the meantime, there is a group of people that dwell among us with strange DNA and share the same appearance with the seed of the fallen. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. The Bible revealed two beginnings for mankind. The first beginning is when the Most High created man in his own image and likeness. The other beginning is when the watchers procreated with the daughters of men and had children in their likeness. As a result of the union between the daughters of men and the watchers, two different species of mankind was created. The Most High is responsible for one species. Too many people cannot understand because they have been programming religion to believe we are one people. I find it interesting that we are one people, yet the indigenous black people are not treated as such in the B system. The Most High breathed the breath of life into the people he made in his image and likeness. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. The abomination the children of man and the angels created are not of the Most High. Leave the Most High out of the sins of men and the angels. The children born to the watchers were created in sin. The angels and the daughters of men were never meant to procreate together, just as the animals and the humans are not to procreate. The watchers were aware procreating with the daughters of men was against the will of the Most High. That is why they took an oath to do as they planned. That is the reason the children born to them are not of the Most High. What I am revealing to you is not hate speech for you to dismiss truth. This is facts and the scriptures confirm. The two species of mankind are not the same. And it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of the heaven, saw and lusted after them and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men, and beget us children. And Samjaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath, and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. 
Then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were in all two hundred who descend in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they call it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. The indigenous black people have a different appearance from the other groups of people they dwell among. The other group of people share DNA that linked them to the seed of the fallen. The kingdom of darkness has a way of hiding things in plain sight, especially with the names they choose to call themselves. The scriptures talk about the Nephthalims. The synagogue of Satan call our distant relatives from the other species of mankind, Neanderthals. It's up to the indigenous black people to make the connection. The same way it is important for the indigenous people to know their names and what is hiding in their names, the indigenous black people must decode the messages hiding in the seed of the serpent's names. They create names that are like the scriptures to hide who they are in plain sight. Another way the synagogue of Satan hide the origins of the other species of mankind by removing and discrediting books that reveal their origin. By now, everyone should know the Bible is missing many manuscripts. Some of the missing books reveal the origin of the other species of mankind. Israelites and indigenous black people, I recommend that you read those books and ask the Most High to reveal what was concealed via his spirit. Now that you know there are two species of mankind, the scriptures reveal to us that Satan spread his seed all over the world. We obtain this knowledge through the wheat and tares parable. The scriptures describe the tares as the children of the wicked one. The scripture said Satan is the enemy that sowed the tares. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man, the field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil, the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. If the scriptures declare Satan planted tares among the wheat and went his way, history must match with the scriptures. That is how prophecies are fulfilled. The Most High prophesied the end from the beginning. Yah said his words will not return to him void. How did Satan plant his seed all over the world? The spoilers in the scriptures always came from the north. The people the Most High used to humble the indigenous black people all over the world come from the land of the north. And the heaven and the earth and all that is therein shall sing for Babylon. For the spoilers shall come unto her from the north, saith the Lord. History revealed the colonial masters came from the north. Remember, Satan said he would sit on the mount of the congregation on the sides of the north. The other species of mankind whom the synagogue of Satan called Neanderthals come from the north. There are strong dark forces dwelling in the north. That region of the world is ruled by high level principalities. Most of the superpower nations of today resides in the sides of the north. America and Canada are a part of the north. History reveal European males were looking for land to colonize. When they arrived to their destinations, they found indigenous black people living on the land. History revealed the colonial masters deceived the indigenous black people, forced themselves on the women, produce children that change the appearance of the indigenous black people dwelling on their land. After the colonial masters gained all the riches they heart desire, they left behind the children born to them from the indigenous black women and went their way. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest... I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. 
Does not the behavior of the colonial and slave masters match with the scriptures? The parable Yahshua told to his disciples revealed, while men slept, the enemy came, so tears and went his way. Does not the scriptures confirm what the European male did? The Most High said, by their fruits, you would know them. Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. The way the European male came and took what belonged to the indigenous black people, enslaved the indigenous black people in their own land, forced themselves on the women and produced children in their likeness all over the world, matched with the behavior of the seed of the serpent. The children born to the indigenous women in the colonial and slave masters were abandoned by their fathers that came from the north. The indigenous black people who were enslaved and colonized by the seed of the serpent were bond men and bond women for hundreds of years. This gave the kingdom of darkness the opportunity to multiply the seed of the serpent in their newfound land. When the children that was born to the slave master and the colonial masters began to multiply, the kingdom of darkness via the synagogue of Satan gave them the land they were born on as an inheritance. As time went on, the synagogue of Satan declared the bastard children of the colonizers are the indigenous people. The synagogue of Satan made those children the face of those nations and changed the land name. That is how the indigenous black people lost their land and identity. The new names identify the tares, not the indigenous black people that are native to the land. The new names Latino, Arab, Hispanic, Asian, Indian, and the many others are names called after the colonial fathers. None of these children came from Shem, Ham, and Japheth. If you have an ear to hear, let them hear what the word is revealing to you. Noah's sons and their descendants are not the fathers to the children born to the colonial masters. None of the names the European male gave to his children all over the world correspond with the scriptures. It is the tradition of the indigenous black people to name their children after their God and fathers. When David built a city, he didn't give his city a random name. He called the city he built the city of David. So David dwelt in the fort and called it the city of David. And David built round about from Milo and inward. The scriptures revealed the Most High is a father to his people, the Israelites. The Most High made his creation in his image and likeness. The Most High did not create children that do not look like him. I cannot understand the indigenous black people today who fetishize children that do not look like them. How can you be fruitful and multiply when you create children that don't look like you nor called after your name? Even the Most High called his people after his name. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. The indigenous black people's tradition of calling a city after their name the Most High and their children is a tradition they learn from their creator, the Most High. The serpent seed does not follow such traditions. If they were descendants of Shem, Ham, and Japheth, they would have named their children after their fathers. Even the children they accepted are not called after Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The full-blooded tares call themselves German, Scottish, and so on. It is well known that the European male do not accept their mixed children as one of them until this day. That is why they created the one drop rule to separate themselves from the children born to them with the indigenous black woman on the land they colonized. They created the race classification system. This is where black, white, Asian, native, Indian, and all the other race categories come from as well as the naming concept for their mixed children, biracial, quadroon, and octoroon. The European male created race to separate the children born to them during their colonial time from their full-blooded children. The kingdom of darkness used the race classification system to introduce the concept of more than one race. By now, you should know there is no such thing as race. 
the European male used the race classification system to cover his track by erasing anything that connect him to the illegitimate children born to them all over the world. If you conduct a DNA test on the colonizer's children, all of them have European DNA and indigenous black people DNA, connecting the children of the colonizers to the two different species of mankind the Bible speak of. It's either you're black, white, or mixed. There is nothing else. There are white Latinos, black Latinos, and mixed Latinos. This concept go for all the ethnicities all over the world. As the children of the colonizers began to multiply, the synagogue of Satan gave them the indigenous black people's identity. The indigenous black people that dwell on the land before the land thieves came are forgotten and grouped together with the Israelites that were scattered all over the world during the transatlantic slave trade. This is the reason your history always began with slavery in the beast culture. The beast system do not recognize the indigenous black natives they found on the land they stole all over the world. They replaced those people with the children of the colonizers. Have any of you noticed that when the nations stop being black, the children of the colonizers have yet to accomplish anything great in the land they stole? The rich history and culture the indigenous black people created, the children of the colonizers can't continue. The land of Mizraim is a prime example. When Mizraim stopped being black, the pharaohs disappeared. If the modern people who proclaim they are the descendants of the Egyptians are truly Mizraim's children, what happened to your culture? How come you didn't continue in your culture heritage? The culture is gone and the people are bland. Nothing new come from these land. The children of the colonizers spend their time living in the past. When the indigenous black people ruled and created a unique culture, everyone covered their style. Until this day, the children of the colonizers take from the black culture, monetize it, and pass it off as their own. They have yet to create anything significant. If Mizraim was truly their father, they would have continued in their culture heritage. Although the indigenous black descendants of Mizraim continue in their culture heritage in the neighboring land they dwell presently, the colonizers' children, the world recognized as Mizraim, have no culture. The children born to the colonial masters know who their father is. That is why many of them identify with Europe. The traditions they keep is the same as their European heritage. In every generation, they breed out the remaining indigenous blood they have from their great grandparent. The children of the colonial masters are the Caucasian and mixed population dwelling in the colonial territories all over the world. I will use the new world as an example because the new world was the heart of the colonial masters operations. In this region of the world is where you will find a lot of the abandoned children born to the colonial masters. Dear children of the colonizers, to be indigenous, you must be native. To be native, you must be a full-blooded indigenous black person. Being born on the land does not make you a native. The children of the colonizers believe they are indigenous to the land they were born on. How are you indigenous and your great grandfather is a colonizer from the land of the north? How are you a different race from the colonizers when you share the same DNA and appearance? The only thing that is different between you and the colonizers is the place of birth. Before the colonizers planted their seed into the indigenous black women of the land, the colonizers' DNA did not exist in the people that live in that part of the world. The colonizers are known to be in the sides of the north like their father, Satan. Your forefather, Satan, said he would sit in the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. That is why the colonizers' children identify more with their European DNA. Additionally, they share the same enmity the Most High said he would put between the two species of people. Most colonizers' children already erase their indigenous black roots. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Israelites and indigenous black people of the world, the truth shall make you free.
The more truth you seek, this will prevent you from making decisions that lead you on the broad road to destruction. You must know who you are and you must know who they are. The history and truth that have been taught to you in their school systems are lies. Their fabricated stories and histories are meant to deceive you and conceal who they are. Return to the Most High. Repent from your sins to obtain eternal life with the Most High. You have come too far and learned too much truth to suffer the same faith as the serpent seed. The Most High is calling his children that are called by his name to seek his face. Do you hear our Father's call? But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers.